Hey everybody, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 208, actually, it is. There you yes, go. yes it is. Very good. I, I almost said nine. I'm getting ahead of myself. You I'm, are. You know why? Because I'm looking forward to the last episode <laughs> of the season <laughs> You're for, probably for not the show. only one. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, for now, uh, we'll, we'll do uh, one last show. Uh, before we get there. Actually, no, it'll be two more, won't it? Two more after It this. will be two more. Yeah. So, see, this is why, again, I say this every time, and I want to start the show the same way. Uh, giving you guys an opportunity uh, to get in here. So, I'm going to do what, what somebody else called in the last show the infomercial, right? <laughs> it was... <laughs> start off start off with the infomercial? <laughs> start off with the infomercial. Yeah, so if you'd like, you guys, uh, please uh, feel free to share this out, retweet, repost, re everything, get all the other sharks, friends and family in here. Uh, it's a lot more fun. We've got more folks in here chatting it up. So, uh, please go ahead and do that. And of course, uh, hit that, uh, subscribe button. If you have not done so with the notification bell, let you guys know when we're going to go live. And the reason that I'm bringing that up right now is because again, we just said, uh, we're going to go live, uh, for the next one week. And we actually meant two weeks. So even we don't get it right sometimes. <laughs> It's great when you've got something that just tells you, isn't it? Just just like a timer that goes off. I wish it would tell us. There it is with the bell. That's actually not the sound you're going to hear, but uh, you're going to hear it again anyway. So <laughs> Super producer Jason, loving the bell tonight. Um, Aaron, uh, we have also want to make sure that we let people know that they can support the show, of course, in uh, numerous different ways. One, of course, being the Super Chat function right at the bottom there. Uh, click that. Or you can go to Venmo at... The Fin Factor, and uh, either one of those, you put a comment in there, and we'll read it out live on the show. Uh, also, of course, you can go to thefinfactor.com, check out any of the merch that we have for sale to support the show that way. There's hats, shirts, t-shirts, uh, sweatshirts. We've got um, adult diapers. Yeah, so there's lots of cool things. Now, some of this might not actually be on the website, uh, but you should definitely check to see which ones are there. Oh, we, you know, we, forgot, forgot. we forgot to put this up. Oh, yeah, go. that's right. Okay, well, you can leave that, right that there. there. That's fine. It looks pretty good. Hopefully, Too soon. hopefully we get a much bigger one uh, in, the years, one. in the years to come. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. So, in any case, uh, I think we gave them ample time to get the stragglers uh, in here. But again, if you could share us out to your uh, Sharks, friends, and family, certainly would appreciate that. Aaron, we had three games um, this past week, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Um, we want to try to get through some of these games quickly because uh, the, the last time we did a show and, and somebody commented on how we took too long uh, <laughs> to get to the meat of it, and I know our thumbnail says, uh, you know, about the, the Sharks prospect. We'll, we'll get to those guys in just a bit. Right. So uh, let's try to blast through these sure. uh, as quickly as we can. Okay, so the Sharks against the LA Kings. Um, the bitter rivalry, not quite as bitter as it used to be. Not like it used to be. No, I think not at all. Vegas has taken over the LA rivalry. Absolutely. I think mainly because LA missed a couple years of playoffs when the Sharks were still in the playoffs. Yeah. So that kind of, um, and Vegas is just terrible. So they, uh, they took over the, the coveted rivalry spot with the San Jose Sharks. So yeah, not as much bite. I mean, there still is the, you know, Bay Area versus L.A. mentality mm -hmm. carrying over from baseball for the Giants and the Dodgers, but um, not nearly as bad. In fact, I think in this game, it was a home game for the Sharks, and there's a lot more L.A. fans, kind of louder L.A. fans than there were <laughs> Sharks fans in this game. Um, but that's what you get for, was it a Tuesday night or a Wednesday night game? I can't even remember what night it was on. Um, but yeah, Sharks lose 2-1 to one in this one. Um they gave up two goals back to back once again. I feel like they must be leading the league in this. And uh, I don't even know how you quantify this. Goals, <laughs> two goals scored in under a minute or two goals scored in less than two minutes okay. against. Okay. If that makes sense. Like, not a lot of teams do this. And I feel like the Sharks have been doing it all season where they give up two goals very quickly. In fact, this one was, uh, I'm going to look up the actual time here. Um, wow. Less than 30 seconds apart. Wow. So they give up two goals in the first period, boom, boom, and then uh, come back in the third period and score one, Clem Costin, with uh, two minutes left in the game, less than two minutes left. So they did push back, but this... Uh, well, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Can you put that back on the screen? Okay, Kellen Foster says, Good evening, everyone. Hurdle looks a little skittish in his first night as a... Knigget. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, reference to uh, Holy Grail, Monty Python and the Holy Grail with uh, the knights, but spelled... I, uh, sounded out phonetically. I, yes, I saw that picture, too, yeah. of him. They're announcing that Did he's not like. back in the lineup. It just looked weird. First of all, they used the Sharks photo, which... I get because they don't have an in-game photo of him yet in gear, but he practiced with them in their gear. So yeah. I don't know. I didn't like that. 
Yeah, you know, obviously not a huge fan of seeing um, a guy that was drafted by the Sharks and played till the ripe old age of 30 uh, <laughs> in, in somebody else's um, kit. But, you know, hey, that, that's that's the business sometimes. You know, you get one of your fan favorite players and they end up playing on somewhere else and trying to win. And I can't blame them for that. I can't blame them for, you know, probably wanting to go. You know, I don't think it was one of those things where it's like, well... You know, if you could move me, I'd be okay with it. He's probably wanted to go, and that's fine. Um, but yeah, it just it just it hurts a little bit uh, seeing him in a different jersey, and it hurts a lot more seeing him in a uh, crusty, uh, gross <laughs> Vegas Golden Knights jersey. So uh, just yeah, wait, that one. wait for those uh, golden helmets to come out. Yeah, right? not a fan. It's just gonna look terrible. Not a fan at all. Uh-uh. Yeah. So in any case, uh, speaking about uh, the, the rest of the Kings game here, at least, the Blackwood you thought played well. And, of course, Clean the Dream, Costin. <laughs> Clean the Dream. I'm going there with it, buddy. It's either Clean the Dream <laughs> or Mr. Clean. You can take your pick or you can use them both. Does You're welcome. Like, does he look like me, a shaved head? Well, <laughs> no, I don't think he no. does. No. That would make more sense. Yeah? yeah. If it was Mr. Clean. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Clean the Dream. Clean That's the what I'm dream. going with. There you go. Um, anything else you wanted to say about Just this? Just Blackwood played very well. He uh, he had some really good some really good saves in this game and kept the Sharks in it for the entire time. I mean, the Sharks came back and and they didn't give up an empty net goal, but they uh, they were pressing the last couple of minutes and it was one of those games that just slogs on. You know, it's just boring. And yeah. L A is a is a very good team that their team made for playoffs. They're a team that's made to get down and dirty and win two to one like this and can win two to one. Or two nothing, you know, like hold that lead and not yeah. give it up because those goals came early in the first period, so they had to hold on for the whole game like that, and uh, they did. And this is the difference between a kind of a different kind of a build of a team of um, again like a playoff team. Like this team, they probably won't win as many games in the regular season, but they're going to go deep in the playoffs with that kind of play. So um, a boring kind of slugfest and. <laughs> Uh, I mean, Blackwood ended up with 926 save percentage in the loss. Nice. So he did very well. And um, again, I think the future looks bright with him in goal. I think he gives the Sharks an opportunity to win just about every night that he plays in, assuming they don't leave him high and try too many times. Yeah, and, and we'll talk a little bit about Sharks' uh, goaltending prospects and that kind of thing a little bit later on. But I have to say, again, for the season, he's been one of the bright spots. Mm-hmm. Another huge bright spot, obviously, for me. Aaron, why have I said uh, we're watching this season? What's the main thing this season uh, that that's keeping me coming back and watching the Sharks? The young guys and how they're uh, progressing. Absolutely. The young... The <laughs> ding! The young folks, Just specifically, <laughs> specifically, uh, you know, Eckland. Um, yes. I, that, that, this guy is the reason for me that this is an entertaining uh, game to watch mm-hmm. uh, any time that where you're watching Sharks hockey because you don't know what he's going to do. Even if he doesn't put the puck in the net, he has flashes and flares and things that make it entertaining. And uh, this game against the St. Louis Blues, uh, no exception. The Sharks end up going on to win this one now. I'm not exactly the biggest fan of Sharks winning games, but we can afford a win here and there. We'll go ahead over those numbers a little bit later on. Uh, so this one, not so bad to pick up a W here. But uh, William Eklund getting that hat trick uh, for the 3-2 overtime win against the St. Louis Blues. The mm-hmm. best thing about this uh, was, well, not there's there actually a couple of really good things about this. But one of the great things about this, I will say, it was hat giveaway night. Straw hats. <laughs> it they always ha- happens that way, doesn't it? Well, actually, it's only, it's twice that it's happened. So Mike really? Ricci, Mike Ricci scored a hat trick on on hat giveaway day. Oh my God, what was that? Twenty three years <laughs> prior, to, almost to the day, it was the day before. Wow. Yeah. So it, on the hat giveaway day, that's the only two days that's ever happened. I think that's what they were telling me on. Uh, no that's what they're saying. That's no, what they're saying. I, I swear there was a there was a game where Chichu scored. I think he had five hat tricks that season at home. I remember losing a lot of hats that season, <laughs> and I swear that was one of the nights was was the giveaway, and I was happily giving away that hat because it was so terrible. It was so like <laughs> just such a cheap hat. I was like, I don't want this. And threw it out. Well, this one looked pretty sweet. It was a nice, uh, it was. big straw hat. Yeah. Perfect for throwing, like a big old frisbee, right? So, uh, yeah, tons of these things hit the ice. Uh, they said they had uh, bags and bags and bags of these hats uh, just stuffed and, and, and pulled off to the side. And I think uh, Thomas Bordelow uh, takes one of them and puts it on Eklund's head. Yeah. And, of course, it was the OT winner, so right. 
that's the end of the game with it's him. It's nice because they got to celebrate off for hat. a little bit longer. They didn't yeah. have to rush to clean up all the hats. They could really just soak it in. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Have so, at home is great. Pretty cool stuff. It's so, a feel good story for a terrible season, right? <laughs> it's what we're here for, right? Right. Uh, so, <laughs> ding. Uh, so two of these goals, power play goals. Was there anything specific you wanted to bring up about them being power play goals? I didn't actually get a chance to see how he put these in. I was unfortunately uh, down south for a lot of these games, uh, doing some roller hockey tournament stuff with the kids. Uh, one of them was a one timer. One of them was a rebound. He kind of skated around the net, and there was a rebound, and he went to the net instead of just keep skating around the net, mm-hmm. and uh, was power in the play. right place at the right time. Yeah, both power, power play. play. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was kind of a, I don't want to say quite a garbage goal, because he wasn't like sitting up front, he was to the side, but it just popped out to the side, and boom, yeah. he put it away. Um, and then the overtime goal, uh, I think it was a 2-1-1, on if I remember correctly, and he shot it, and yeah. passed, and, and just put it away. Um, so kind of a a hodgepodge of, of goals here by Eklund and um, obviously a great game and one of his best games to date. Yeah, I mean, the guy can do it any which way you like. He, like you said, he carries it around behind the net and, and drives the net uh, on one of those goals. Another one, the one-timer. We talked about this before with Eklund and his one-timer, and I cannot wait to see uh, Haltonen mm-hmm. uh, getting him uh, on this team on the opposite side because then you've got a couple of cannons yeah. Uh, on, on the left and on the right because I, I, we've seen Eklund do this now a couple times over where he's just standing there ready, cocked and loaded. And when that shot comes off, it is, it's an NHL shot. Yeah. Uh, so uh, good on him getting it off the one-timer, driving the net, and then simply a two-on-one where he doesn't have to make a pass, nothing fancy. He just straight beats a goalie on mm-hmm. this shot. So, um, yeah, just an electric player. I'm so glad that this is the pick that they decided to go for. I'm glad he fell to us. <laughs> no I mean, kidding. What, I feel uh, very lucky that he fell to number seven. Really? Yeah. I mean, honestly, what a fantastic pickup. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's just been dazzling since he's been in Teal. Like, yeah. really, that's the word for it. He's just I, dazzling. I honestly think the development of him keeping him out of the NHL for the last two seasons has helped him because he's uh, rounded out his game better to the point where um, he's not a defensive liability. And coaches are going to trust him, give him bigger and more minutes. And he's making plays like this now. Now that he's kind of got that stuff down, um, he can, you know, he doesn't have to think about his offense. It's just there. And all the other pieces are kind of coming together. And his improvement this season has, it's it's cool to watch in the very beginning how, yeah, he was good, but he wasn't, he wasn't like how he is right now. And comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great word for it. Yeah. Comfortable. Um, he, it's fun. He is fun to watch when he's on the ice every shift. Yeah. Something's going to happen every time he has a puck. It's electric. It's cool. So uh, the other part of this that was, um, you said, use the word cool, perfect, Devin Cooley. <laughs> yeah. uh, Cooley getting his first win uh, of the season. Los and, Gattis native. Uh, yeah, there Devin you go. Devin Cooley. Yeah, just sing his praises, man. There, there you go. There's you go. his picture. This kid was... Uh, kid he's 21 but he was in the, he's a 20, kid to us buddy tw- not 21 that's half our age come on seven um he uh he played for the junior sharks and then uh moved around and he was signed by buffalo i think is where he came from he's, we're still waiting he's still waiting on his pads i don't know if you noticed in the game but his oh, pads blue. are uh very very blue <laughs> buffalo sabers blue uh, he got his helmet, though. His helmet was done. It was pretty cool. So he got the mask of his helmet. The back part was still blue. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> still... I thought that was... Oh. I mean, uh, look, there may be some sort of a pattern there that I don't Maybe. know, but like yeah. it was blue. The yeah. back of his helmet. The front was a uh, shark's paint job, but the, the back, yeah, definitely not. So anyway, he, continue. Uh, he had a great game, and his parents were there, and... Uh, I don't know who else, but he had a bunch of family there and, and, and friends and stuff, so it was really cool. But he did make NHL history here. Oh. So uh, this is a, a tweet from Darren Stevens, which you should follow, Shark Stats on Twitter. Uh, SJ Sharks' Devin Cooley became the first California-born goalie in NHL history to record a win for any California-based NHL franchise, franchise including the Seals. French fries. French fries, yes. <laughs> NHL French fries. Uh, we're French here. So, um, <laughs> uh, just a cool a cool stat. I mean, he's not the first California-born goalie to get an NHL win, but the first team, first California-born goalie to play for a California team and get a win, which is pretty cool. So, homegrown, homegrown talent, um, and goalie, too. That's, Absolutely. I think that's kind of, uh, that's a position I don't feel like you would see a lot of, maybe... 
Well, it's funny because what's it? Dustin Wolf is the other guy, right? He's from Gilroy, I think. Yeah, but I think he moved. I don't think he still lived in Gilroy, did he? Nah, I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah. But yeah, that is that's another kid that's going to be in the NHL down the road. He's still pretty more full time. Yeah, he's 20, 21, 22, mm-hmm. still pretty young. Um, so he's got some time to to ripen, and he looks like he's going to be the future in Calgary mm-hmm. uh, in a couple more seasons. Um, the Sharks go on to sweep uh, the series, the season series against. <laughs> is that Louis. weird? What is going St. on? St. Louis can't get a win against San Jose, the only team in the NHL that couldn't get a win. You know, again, it just goes to show <laughs> that hockey is not necessarily about where you are in the standings and saying, "Oh, we should beat this team." Sometimes right. it's rock paper scissor. Like literally, it's sometimes it's rock paper scissor, and sometimes you're the rock, and the sharks are are paper, and uh, you lose. It's every single time. That's and what happens. St. Louis is fighting for a wild card spot right now for the playoffs. Mm, probably and not anymore. <laughs> not gonna make it. <laughs> not, not gonna make it anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're still hanging there. I mean, six points right there. That's, yeah, that's the difference. Yep. You beat the Sharks in those three games, and they're at ninety three points, and they bump Vegas and out of yeah, their spot. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, way to go, St. Louis. I guess a broken clock is right three times a day, not twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> broken hockey team. Anyway. Right. Uh, Sharks then take on the Arizona Coyotes, losing this one by a score of five to two. But that was an empty um, net in there. So was that? It, was really, it was an empty net. Okay, so, so four to two, two with an empty net. See, I like how we do this. Yeah. When, when it's Every the time. Sharks, when it's the Sharks, no, it would have been five to two. I don't right. care if it was empty net or not, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, but anyway, uh, so this one here, uh, Colin Graf uh, picks up his first NHL point, correct? Yes. And it is an assist. Now, the the scouting on this guy has been more that he's kind of that playmaker. Maybe we'll talk a little bit more about that a uh, little bit. Actually, pretty much right after this. Yeah. So, um, it, it's it's fitting that his first point would be an assist as opposed to a goal because that is his game. He's, he's a playmaking type. He sees the ice. He sees open passing lanes. He finds the shooting lanes as well. But uh, by all accounts, he's a quick decision maker mm-hmm. uh, who, who moves the puck really well. Yeah, and... and- uh, I don't know if people are wondering why he was never drafted because he was undrafted. And then he became this hot prospect that all yeah. these uh, NHL teams wanted. Um, during his draft when he was 17 and it was kind of their draft age, uh, he was very small. He was five foot, I don't know, five foot seven, five foot eight maybe. And, you know, if you have skill, you might be you might get drafted that small, but they'd want you to get a lot bigger. Um and he kind of had a late growth spurt because by by now he's six foot one or six two I think. Okay. So he definitely grew. He just grew later than most kids. So he missed out on the draft. He's six one, uh, one hundred and ninety four pounds. That's pretty good size. That's decent for uh, a young kid that's twenty one now. Um, but he had he always kind of had the skill. Uh, I don't think his skating was great, but it's gotten a little bit better. Um, but he. He talked to, what was it, 25 teams, I think, were interested, including the Sharks. So almost the entire league yeah. wanted to sign this kid. He was Hobie Baker finalist two years in a row. Hobie Baker is the equivalent of uh, the Heisman Trophy for hockey, um, in case you weren't sure what that even meant. But uh, he was in the running for basically the MVP of the NCAA two years in a row. Um, granted, he's older. He's 21 versus Celebrini, who is still 17. Yeah. Um, so there was a big difference there. There you go. He was 5'8", 145 pounds during his draft year. That's wow. very small. Yeah. Um, which is why he went undrafted. So um, he is, let's see, what did you say? You put in some notes here. You want to read those? Well, it's just that, you know, again, we, we wonder why, you know, this is a guy that's from the NC2A, and we're talking about Will Smith, he drafted. Macklin Celebrini will be drafted. Right, and then why is this guy coming out of NC2A and there's no draft? Well, he was actually passed on on draft. His draft eligibility, as we just talked about, right? Uh, just very small mm-hmm. uh, is what it came down to. So him being 20 years old, he was linked to the Florida Panthers actually when he was 20. Uh, they were thinking about having signing him. Uh, he decided he wanted to go back to school, get his degree. Uh, so he played another year at uh, Quinnipiac. I Quinnip- hope I'm saying that correctly. Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac. You could not gonna work anymore. Uh, so anyway, he he finished uh, schooling there basically, and then when he got out of that, when it was just like what two weeks ago, <laughs> whatever it was, yeah. a week ago, um, he then decided he was gonna sign with the Sharks. Now again, there was like I think somewhere between yeah 25 or so teams that were interested. He narrowed it down to six teams that were very, very serious for him. And then from there, he picked the Sharks. One of those six, actually, Florida Panthers, uh, yeah. allegedly. Allegedly. Anyway, um, so he uh, he picked the Sharks. And I think we we heard him talking 
saying that, you know, they were very honest with me. They were very upfront with me. And I'm thinking, okay, I think most teams would want to be honest with you, but there, that was something that resonated with him. Great. Um, and I think also just he was going to get the opportunity to play and burn that first year uh, was probably another big part of it, right? So, um, you know, he, there's a lot of opportunity on the Sharks for a young, uh, solid player, somebody who's very promising, uh, to be able to come in and, and get that experience right off the hop. Uh, and then, you know, knowing that you've got other guys that are coming in at, that are about your age, um, it wouldn't be difficult to see this as, again, we've, we've said this, uh, the Colorado effect, right? Having all these guys that are around the same age, all coming up at the same time, lots of high skill. There's a lot of potential to do a lot of damage for many years. And, uh, you know, a young free agent like this can probably see into that and realize, yeah. hey, this is a good opportunity to get in now. Well, he said he sat down with his, his uh, agent and went through all the teams and went through all the depth charts, did a very, very yeah. in-depth. It wasn't just a kind of, oh, I kind of like the Sharks colors. It was, <laughs> they went through everything and said, okay, this is going to be my career path. Which way, which team is going to get me the furthest in the NHL? And going back to what we've always said on the show, players don't really care. They don't have allegiances to teams. They want to play in the NHL. Now, we're talking... Everyday players, not the superstar players, because sure, they can dictate kind of where they want to yeah. go, but everyone else that's on your second, third, fourth lines, defensemen that were people in the minors that are trying to get in, they don't care what team they're on. So he went through and with his with his agent and goes, okay, San Jose gives us the best opportunity. They're not promising anything. That Again, going back to the, the truth, what yeah. Quinn talked to him, he said, this is Quinn used to be a recruiter when he was uh, when he was coaching in college, and he was like, "If any coach promises you, at whatever level, that you're going to get top power play minutes and you know whatever else, and give you everything you wanted, run away from them as fast as you can because you don't want to be on that team. You're not earning that. Mm-hmm. You're not you're not going to put in the hard work because it's already given to you. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to earn it. You're not going to play well. You want to be able to have an opportunity to make that first." you know, top power play, but you don't want anything handed to you because the hard work won't come. And that's kind of what Quinn told him. Like, yes, you have an opportunity to come here and you can play and become part of something that's growing because this, like you're seeing the players that are going to be coming in. You're seeing the depth chart. You're seeing how much uh, cap space there is. So how much more room for more free agents are going to come in, whatever else they're going to have money to pay you when you get uh, to your next contract. Um, that was also a factor was he would be playing now, not getting sent to the minors. And so the first year of his entry level contract is getting quote unquote burned. Right. He's going to be using up, um, an entire year's worth in the next two weeks of games. Um, so again, that gets him closer to being a restricted free agent, which gives him basically a bridge contract to get to his next big contract. So potential to get more money quicker than he yeah. would elsewhere. So a very in-depth, um, analysis and decision made by him his agent his family whoever else he was with um but yeah the sharks won out over 25 teams it's incredible yeah and and he was by all accounts the the top prize considered the top prize of collegiate free agents so uh, for the sharks to go out and be able to uh, make it enticing for this guy to bring him in it's very promising and encouraging for other free agents uh, outside of being, you know, restricted free agents or you know, the the un, unrestricted guys, mm-hmm. the older guys, it's promising seeing that we're attracting young talent that wants the opportunity to play, and being able to say, hey, you know what, uh, some of these older guys that are maybe on the UFA market, a lot of times they don't want to come to a team that's going through this rebuild. But again, you see the level of talent that they're bringing in. If this was the top guy. This is the big prize when it comes to collegiate hockey uh, uh, free agents and the Sharks were able to land him. That should say something about the organization. That should say something about where this guy thinks his career is going to go by being with this team. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it doesn't take a genius to see that there's a lot of good young talent that's going to be coming up. And I don't think it's going to be too hard to attract some of the older UFA talent. Maybe not the superstars. But again, the, t- the types of guys that Mike Greer wants for this team, the blue collar guys, the, um, what do you call it? The, uh, the character guys, mm-hmm. the ones that are gonna help set the culture, those hard workers, the Nico Sturms of the team, those guys I don't think are gonna be shying away from the Sharks just because they had some bad seasons. I think it's a, gonna be one of those things where they see it as a good place to kind of revitalize their career or become part of a winning team uh, in a short amount of time, hopefully. 
but we'll see how that goes. Um, the other thing that I wanted to bring up was that um, it, it was interesting that they asked him what's the biggest difference between collegiate hockey and pro hockey because he's done practices with the Sharks now. Yeah. And and what is it that we've always heard? Speed. We've always heard speed. Every single time, they're Quickness, faster. Not, not top speed. Yes. The speed of the well, game is faster. Even the top speed, but yes, well, the quickness. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much more quickness. Every single person can dangle you in this league. Even yep. the most defensive defenseman has masterful control over the puck less, when you're trying to take it away. Yeah, you have less time with the puck than you think you do. Absolutely. Yeah. And so the, the speed of the game has always been the thing. But the first thing he said, in fact, the only thing he said, he didn't even bring up speed, he said was the strength. Huh. So that, to me, is very interesting as well. If it's just a strength thing, because... Uh, they always work on strength and conditioning, so he's going to get stronger over time. Um, you know, in terms of the speed of the game, if that's not bothering him, if he thinks that the speed of the game is okay and it's he can keep up with it, and it's just the the strength part of it. I mean, he's going to bulk up, he's going to get stronger. So this could be another really good signing here for Mike Greer. Yeah, I agree. And and going back to the strength thing, I don't think he means you know like lifting weights kind of strength it's more of uh what quinn always preaches is like even to eckland going to those corners and winning those pucks you don't have to knock the guy off the puck oh yeah you just have to strong enough use your body and get in there and get into the dirty work yeah. i'm i'm sure that's what he means more um than you know just these guys are strong kind of well no but, and that's just it is that's what i'm saying is with, yeah. the, with the strength of the game because again when you're battling for for a puck with someone it's amazing, and I, I talked with, with my, my oldest son about this all the time, mm -hmm. is just like that. I'm not expecting you to body check anybody because, first of all, you can't in this right. thing anyway. But um, I'm not expecting that. But what I'm expecting is, you know, you're getting low. You're mm -hmm. leaning in. When they're trying to bump you, you don't just uh, and take it and get knocked. You kind of give it back. The strength that is involved in that, Absolutely. right, that, that's what he's talking yeah. about, obviously, of course. Um, but it's not like, oh, yeah, they all just lift lots right. of weights. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they're so buff. They're, just, they're like, crazy. Wow. They're crazy, bro. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> He's also coming into the season towards the end of the season. Yeah. And these guys are in peak condition right now because they've been playing, not just practicing, but playing games and, yeah. and having game speed for 75 games now. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Um, yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> I remember at uh, Sonoma State when someone would get out-muscled off the ball in soccer, everyone on the bench would just yell, Weight room. No. <laughs> it was funny. It was a funny thing. But see, no, exactly that, right? Yeah. So the the strength in terms of getting bumped off the puck, getting shoved off, uh, you know, into the wall, getting yeah. pinned into the yeah. wall, and you can't move, mm -hmm. right? There's those types of things that we're talking about with strength. So um, if that's the type of thing, again, he's going to hit the weight room. He's going to get stronger, and he's going to be able to handle uh, the the strength of other players better, uh, being more balanced. Uh, being stronger and able to, to shove those guys off, uh, you know, when they're attacking him. So uh, if if the speed of the game is not bothering him, then this could be very very promising. Uh, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I'm just saying uh, that's it's he did not say speed. Right. It's going to be a great trial yeah. run in a way for him because he's gonna he's gonna come back. You know, he's gonna go into the summer knowing what to work on, yeah. knowing what to expect now because he's had a little taste of the NHL, and then work on that stuff in the summer. Come back, maybe even bulk up a little bit more for that strength. And then come into training camp ready to go and uh, also already making friends on the team. So that's going to be also helpful going into camp. Yeah, so he's actually already got uh, a is friend he, on the team. Does he have a roommate? Uh, I don't know about roommate, but uh, Henry Thrun. Thrun. Yeah. Right? So uh, it's funny because he said that Thrun uh, actually picked him up and took him to practice. Mm -hmm. uh, and he goes, and hopefully he brings me back. <laughs> <laughs> they had a good chuckle with the the reporters there. Yeah. It was pretty funny, but uh, yeah. So he he already knows Henry Thrun. Apparently, they do three on three in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, and my kids actually do like three on three jamborees and stuff. That's over at Shark Ice, and it's yeah. You just take a handful Whoever's of friends, yeah. you know. And sometimes you don't even really have a goalie. You have somebody who's just throwing pads on, and it's like <laughs> who cares, you know? It's just supposed to be fun anyway. Yeah. So um, he probably did that with with Henry Thrun, and then, of course playing against Henry Thrun as well. So. Um, he knows him well enough playing against him. He knows him well enough that he has him on his three-on-three -three team. Yeah. So they must be pretty decent buds. So, um, I yeah, think, pretty cool. Uh, when Shang interviewed him, I think he said Thrun had, was texting with him too. Yes. Um, about coming and joining the Sharks and how great it is and everything. Yeah. You know, it's interesting for young guys like that to come in here. picking San, Basically, he picked San Jose. It's, he's in a rare position where he got courted by so many teams, especially for a guy that's... He's not going to be top line guy, yeah. at least not right away. I don't think he'll ever be. I don't think he's that good. But my point being, like, 
he kind of is that rare example of getting to choose where he wants to go. Now, imagine choosing San Jose over, let's say, Columbus, right? Not that Columbus was in the running, I'm just using a, a, sure. a city that doesn't cost as much money as San Jose. So <laughs> this guy's making an uh, entry-level contract, I don't know, seven, dollars $800,000. You take off half for about taxes, another 10% for your yeah. agent fee. Now you're making three, four $400,000. Sounds like a lot of money. It's not. For people who don't live in San Jose, that's not a lot of money. That's that. It's nice, but you're not going to buy a house. No. You're not going to buy an apartment or a condo, nothing. You're not, you're not going to buy a one-bedroom studio. You <laughs> might buy a car. <laughs> might. Like, you just, you're probably bunking up. I bet you Thrun and him are, move, are living together if, uh, I don't know what his situation is. I don't really care. But um, a lot of those guys end up living at Santana Row. They'll yeah. rent an apartment in Santana Row and share. Like, they'll, they'll uh, have roommates and stuff. Um, but anyway, it, it's... A lot of people are saying, you know, people, free agents don't want to come to San Jose because it's so expensive. Yeah. Like, that's part of it. But I don't think that's always true either. That, that's a part of it, but that's not going to be the main part of the reason why people wouldn't come here. Well, and, and I think let's go ahead and just launch straight into the next little part here because uh, this is kind of... Uh, if you recall from last week, guys, we talked a little bit about uh, Pierre Maguire and his... It's called The Eye Test. His podcast called The Eye Test. I don't remember who his partner is on that show, but that's their podcast. And on that podcast, they had talked about how the Sharks rebuild is not going off uh, the way <laughs> that they thought it would go, uh, or, or it's not just going off well at all in the first place. And this is one of the points that, that he brought up, right, was right. what you were just talking about, that there's no free agents that are going to want to come here when the team is not winning so that they can pay a ridiculous amount of money uh, for their living expenses. And they, he goes, and that's a real problem. Now, um, Shang had actually talked to uh, Pierre Maguire on his show, on his mm -hmm. podcast, Shang Peng, San Jose Hockey Now. If you don't uh, know them, if you are not subscribed to them, please check them out. Shang does phenomenal work. Um, he's uh, one of the best writers uh, anywhere, and he does great analysis and everything else. So he actually sat down with Pierre and Pierre's guy, whoever that is, uh, and they were talking a little bit about his comments and whatnot, and that was definitely one of the things that Pierre had, had brought up. But before we talk a little bit about that, we're going to go ahead and do the roll call first. So um, go ahead and kick off what the roll call question is going to be. Uh, sure. Tell us what city you are watching from, and do you think Mike Greer is really turning this around, or do you think uh, he's not doing a good job? I don't know. Do you think he's turning it around? Give us your comments. I, yeah, I mean, do you, I mean, the, is the rebuild going the way that you think is intended, or do you think the rebuild is just going to flop? Like, this is not working rebuild. Is, is that what you think, or do you think that they're going in the right direction? I think they're definitely going in the right direction, and I think Mike Greer came in here with a, this is one of the reasons why he won the job in the first place. He came with a plan. He's a man with a plan. <laughs> he came in, and he said, this is what's wrong with the team. This is how I'm going to fix it. Yeah. This is how long it's going to take. This is how much money it'll probably cost. We expect to be a competitive playoff team in X amount of years. Now, of course, they don't say this publicly. Right. But there's no way he just got this job on a whim. There's not. They, they liked what he had to say. They liked right. what his ideas were, what his plan was. He hired way more staff than I think they'd ever really had before in both development side and uh, drafting and, and everything else in the front office. Now, there's a very interesting quote here. This, uh, again, this is from Shang's tweet. I don't think you pulled this, Jay, did you? Um, I can read it anyway. But Quinn had an interesting quote on the rebuild. Oh, he does have Look it, at of him. course. Look at All, right. All right. This, this <laughs> like... This goes to everything I've been saying and preaching and, and talking about Greer. Uh, this is from Quinn. We're in a lot better position than we were two years ago. We knew that this was probably going to be the year that was going to be the most painful. Things are going to turn around here quickly. Now, a lot of people were kind of throwing shade on the word quickly there, saying, yeah, yeah right, this is not going to be a quick turnaround. But Greer's been here for two years, yeah. not even two full years yet. And the amount of players that have come that have left and the contracts that have left and the amount of players that have come in and draft picks and draft capital and yeah. everything else has been astonishing. Now, again, not the Chicago rebuild where fire sale, everything must go right now. That's kind of a, a scorched earth rebuild. Yes. And I think that's what a lot of people wanted to see in San Jose and it's not what happened. So 
again, I'm going to go back, or I want to see in maybe another two years and compare Chicago with San Jose because they roughly started the same time of the rebuild. It's sure. kind of right when they lost Kane and Taves yep. and they retired and moved on and whatever. Um, and they did the scorched earth method to get Bedard. Now, getting Bedard obviously is going to kickstart things more than oh, of course, if yeah. San Jose did. But um, two different ways of doing it, and I'm curious to kind of watch that. Now, here's another tweet here. I know Jason loves these tweets, but this is from <laughs> Big Head Hockey. <laughs> this is uh, Young Sharks additions in just the last year. Will Smith, Quentin Musty, Colin Graft, Fabian Zetterland, Shakir Mukmadulin, David Edstrom, Jack Thompson, Casper Heltonen, a 24 first round from Pittsburgh, a 25 first round from Vegas, a 24 second round from New Jersey. This team is getting a lot younger pretty quickly. Now, not scorched earth, yeah. but that's a lot of young talent coming in Absolutely. and a lot of higher end young talent coming in. Now, obviously, Will Smith's going to be leading that group. I still think Musty's going to turn out great. Some people are saying he might not. Go ahead. Ryan oh, Sontag ding, ding, ding. hitting us with a $5 super <laughs> chat. And, of course, his comment says, ding, 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 ding. I got all five dings. I just want you to know, I read the whole comment, Ryan Sontag. I appreciate you, buddy. Thank you so much for supporting the show. Do appreciate it. Um, Aaron, what else do you have to say about ding, 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 ding? Thank you. Is it a ding per dollar? A ding per dollar? I think that's what it is. A ding per dollar? There you go. Ding, ding, ding. I think he's asking you to hit the bell, Super Juice Jason. Is that what it is? (laughs) He likes the bell, apparently. He likes the bell, yeah. Um, (laughs) I I think this is rock bottom. I think this season was the worst one that they're going to have. I don't think it's going to get worse. I think it's only going to get better. Uh, it has to moving out so many people and bringing in so many more young guys they're going to have now it's going to be like a uh, a thing of growing pains of yeah. the young guys coming in but and they're all not going to be coming into the sharks right away either but go ahead you had some other notes in here too no i mean it's uh, again i i'm i'm kind of going back to the comments that pierre maguire had and what he was saying was that the rebuild's not going the not going well in San Jose, and I'm sorry, but if you take a look at the tweet that we just put up, this is what a rebuild is. A, a rebuild is getting rid of Eric Carlson, getting rid of Brent Burns, getting rid of unfortunately Tomas Hurdle, getting rid of and not signing for ten million dollars uh, Timo Meyer. Mm-hmm. Right, this is what a rebuild is. It's taking your stud veteran players and moving them. Preferably with one year left, but sometimes with six years left. <laughs> um, holding on to some cash. Too. Just, you know, whatever. is right. what it is. Uh, so it's getting rid of these guys that are going to help your team win. Because it's not about winning right now. You're not going to the playoffs. You haven't been to the playoffs. We don't need you right now. So you ship those guys off and you bring back futures. This is exactly what he's doing. I don't understand the, the, the concept of it not going well when you take a look at the list. Now, maybe there's no, you know, there's no Jack Eichel-esque type player on there. Will Smith, I think, is kind of in that category, maybe, right? There's there Maybe there's no superstar blue chip, immediate jump into the lineup, Connor Bedard, Connor McDavid, Connor, Connor, Connor type players that are in that lineup. Maybe not. But you know what? Those are the players that are available to us, and that's the best he was able to do. So regardless of who else is out there in years past or years to come, this is what he was able to do now. And I would say, taking a look at that list, he's done a hell of a job bringing in futures. He's not hanging on to any of these older guys, right? Mm-hmm. And again, I, I was against the Tomas Hurdle trade. I, I don't think he's an old guy. And I don't agree with Shang on this one. I, I, I actually agree um, with myself, believe that or not. Uh, I, I think you could have just held Shocker. on. I, I think you just could have held on to him for at least another year. Yeah, his stock's going down. Nah. But as he's 30 to 31, his stock's not going to move that much. I don't get it. It's okay. It's happened. It's done. I just, the I point don't... is, we unloaded a right now winning player to get what? Futures. That is exactly what you do in a rebuild. And I think if you look at what we got in um, uh, Edstrom and the first... I think Edstrom is a pretty promising guy. He's projected to be like a third-line center. And the first is 
whatever we decide to do with it. We could trade up and get something better. We can trade across and get a, a player or a prospect that maybe another team isn't as high on anymore for whatever reason, just needs a change of scenery. I think we've had a couple of guys work out like that for us this season, right? I mean, Zetterlin being one of them, Zadina being another one of them. Mm -hmm. I think we've had guys that I would happily trade a pick to get that player who's right on the cusp of being in their prime and they just need to change the scenery. I think we've got a lot of good players from all the moves that Mike Greer has made, and I just can't sit here and say the rebuild's not going well in San Jose. I don't think there's really been any busts for any of the trades that he's made. There has been one bust in my mind, and I will remember the name and get back to you in just a second. <laughs> from a trade. No, uh, no not a trade. From, it was from signing. a trade. Yes, not from a trade. From no, a signing. Signing, no. yes. Yeah. Who? But from the trades. Who? Uh, Who's the signing? For the signing? Yeah. Who is it? Come on, you know it. Hoffman. Hoff Hoffman was part of a trade. Oh, okay, then part was, of a trade. He was a dump in the trade. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Then that, no. Then no. I don't see any issues. Yeah. I, I, I think he's done an incredible job getting pieces where he looked like he was on the wrong end of the deal and now in hindsight already is already looking like especially the new jersey trade yeah looking like uh gangbusters here i mean took both their goalies <laughs> blackwood and vanacek <laughs> right for kakinen yeah you trade out kakinen to yeah. get to get vanacek i don't know i just Especially since Blackwood has been on fire. If Blackwood was like, ah, oh, he's serviceable, then okay. But Lim he's been crushing it. People are saying Limblom. Limblom is, but that was a signing, not a trade. That was a reclamation. That was a. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, Limblom was Limblom. was Greer. Yeah, Limblom was. He Greer. signed yes. him as a free agent though. Yes. That wasn't part of a trade. I was talking about trades. That that was an absolute bust of a signing. 100%, Peter St. John brings 100%. up a really good one too. Uh, Noah Gregor <laughs> letting him go. I think it was a mistake. Shut up. <laughs> he doesn't move the needle and you know it. Come on. Goodness gracious. Yeah. Uh, yeah. People are thinking the Sharks will make playoffs in 26-27. That's when I think. That's another three seasons from now. That's what, I think they'll be, at that point, they'll be a bubble playoff team. That's think, like 200 episodes from if now. If they get Celebrini, I think it'll go faster by a year. I think it doesn't matter. I think it does. I think we get there in two years. It also depends on who they sign in free agency yeah. in that, not yeah. next season, but the one after. Guys, that's I'm be a big one. recklessly optimistic. <laughs> you know me, okay? I've been, I, I, I remember uh, it was uh, three seasons ago, four seasons ago, whatever it was, and I was like, the Sharks are making the playoffs, and they didn't make the playoffs. And the next season, I said, the Sharks are making the playoffs, and they didn't make the playoffs. I mean it this time, guys. Five years. <laughs> We've, that's a We've, lot of lost <laughs> bets. We've made the playoffs once since this show started. Yeah. But what a playoff run that was. Oh, uh, what a way to go out, huh? <laughs> what a way to start. Yeah. But it is what it is. Anyway. Um, one person that we didn't talk about, and I don't even There's have a lot the of guys notes. we didn't talk about. Well, I don't even have the notes, is Beasted. He came up and played yeah. for the for the Barracuda this week. Yes, he did. And his first game had two goals. Good for him. Two goals and an assist, maybe? I know he had two goals. I don't know what other points he may have had, but I know he put put two goals in, and that was a direct response to Aaron saying that he was a 4C uh, at, at best. 3C, 4C. In the NHL. I know. He was a direct response to that. He says, oh, yeah? Two goals, first game, buddy. You should be scoring that as a fourth-line center in the AHL. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. Who's I, leading the, the AHL? Who's leading the Barracuda in scoring? Oh, Nathan Todd? Yeah. Well, okay, but there's a lot of guys that were there that got moved. Let's get real. Oh, okay. Okay, just saying. You telling me if Bordelow and Eklund weren't playing for the Barracuda still that they wouldn't be ahead of Nathan Todd? Gushin's in second, so that's good. I mean, that I'm not as well. I'm not as high on Gushin. Actually, if you could scroll just a little bit, we'll, we'll look, take a look at the, 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 the prospects here. Because the Sharks, um, I, I feel like... Again, going back to Mike Greer and the job that he's doing. I feel like this is... Oh, thank you, Nick. It says two goals and one assist. Yes, for the debut. Uh, I feel like this is the deepest Sharks prospect pool ever. I mean, have we ever had this many prospects that are just like, man, this guy hits, this that, guy hits, yeah. this guy hits? That's the other, the other thing I was going to say about Greer. The draft two seasons ago when he first got hired, I don't think he really was making... He, he wasn't getting his guys, right? right? He was he had to go off of the all the work that was done the entire year before. You're not going to take an entire year's worth of scouting reports and flush it and go, eh, 
throw these away. A whole year's know? worth of work, right? What do they, they don't know? know anything. Yeah. I know everything. No, that's that's nobody does that. If they do, then they wouldn't have that job very right. long. Right. So I don't consider that draft two years ago really many of his picks. Um, so last year's draft was kind of his first one where he had all of his scouting staff, all of everything, every staff, yeah. how he, who he wanted, minus the Russian scout that he ended up firing <laughs> a couple weeks ago. But um, my point being, like, that draft, they've already hit on, I feel like, four of those guys. Oh, yeah. Four of those guys look like they're, I mean, Will Smith's obvious. So, well, let's just go through some of the names, and then we'll we'll separate them based on if they were, you know, Greer's pick or, or, or not, right? Okay, so... Of the forward group, you've got the, the bigger names are Will Smith, uh, Quentin Musty, Philip Beestead, David Edstrom. Beestead was the year before. No, I'm just saying these oh, are the, oh, oh, these sorry, are sorry. the Sharks prospects. I thought you were going through last year's so, draft. So go through. <laughs> no, then we'll go through some of these names and go. Okay, this is a guy that that yeah. you know Greer brought in. This is what we had right. So uh, again, Will Smith, Quentin Musty, Philip Beestead, David Edstrom, mm-hmm. who was acquired in a trade, mm-hmm. uh, Daniel Gushin. Uh, Thomas Bordelow, Cam Lund, Casper Haltonen, and Colin Graff most recently. So of those forwards, I think it's Will Smith, Quinton Musty, Edstrom was brought in. Um, I want to say Colin Graff, obviously, and then I want to say was, Haltonen was already in the system. No, he no. was drafted in this last draft. He was drafted in this last draft as well. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of guys. Mm-hmm. So let's see, Smith, Musty, uh, Edstrom. Canyoni's another one. Yeah, but that's, we're talking defense. Right. That's that's Sorry. defense. That's defense. So uh, Halton and Graf. So five out of like those what eight nine, nine names, whatever it is. I mean, th- these are the yeah. sh- these are the Sharks' top prospects. And in the one or two year of drafting, in the two years he's year. been yeah. as a GM, he brought in more than half. Yeah, I mean. That's a pretty good job. I would he, say the rebuild's going okay. You remember when he took over the job? Everyone was like, "This nobody wants this job." Yeah. Because they have the worst prospect pool. They have the worst contracts. They have the worst everything. Like, who yeah. would want that job? It's like, come on, really? That's that's a challenge. That's like every GM's dream to be able to take the entire roster, make the it your own org, and make it yours. Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay, the time has run out on all of these contracts. All these big contracts. They're they need to go. They need to get out of here and. That's like a perfect time versus like coming into, let's say you're the new GM of the Kings and you have, and you're still in a playoff spot, yeah. right? You can't get rid of those guys. You can't make anything your own, really. You kind of have to let them play out and then eventually make it your own. And and let's go through the defensive guys, the, the top defensive guys. I, I guess I would still consider Henry Thrun like prospect. Last year, even though he, he's, traded, he traded for But him. I'm saying I, I would still consider him a prospect, even though he's getting NHL games and he's played like pretty much a season. Yeah. I still consider him a prospect, right? Yeah. So um, Henry Thrun, Shakir Mukmadulin, Jack Thompson, and uh, Luca Cagnoni. Right. I, I hope I'm saying that right. I really want to have an interview with this guy just to ask him, how do you say your last name? Bring us some Italian food. Yeah, a, a cannoli and some spaghetti and meatballs, maybe a pizza slice. So, I don't is, know. It, is it cannoli can- or is it spaghetti? Is it a hard G or a <laughs> lasagna? Right. We're going to get hit. Real, real, G's, real G's move in silence like lasagna. That's what uh, Lil Wayne said, so I'm just saying. And okay. the Finn Factor got canceled. <laughs> so... Um, okay, of those names, this is great. Listen to this. Of those names, how many of them are Mike Gears guys? Four names. How many are Mike Gears guys? All four. Yeah. So he brought in every single higher end defensive prospect mm-hmm. that we have. Yeah. The rebuild is going fine in San Jose. <laughs> you brought in five high end forwards, and you I, brought in four fairly. I, when I say high end, I mean prospect, not like they're going to be starters in the league. No, I'm just saying in terms of prospects, these are good prospects. They, you brought in five forwards and four. You almost brought in an entire team. I will be happy when they get a top blue chip defenseman. Sure, Mook Medillon's going to be good, but he's not going to be top line pairing. He's going right. to be second pairing. Yes, second power play minutes, which is fine. It's totally fine. Um, having someone like Makar, which obviously is not easy good luck, to get, yeah. right? But my point being, like someone like that caliber player, you need one of those superstar players on your team. Maybe not the defenseman position, but any position. Yeah. And I don't feel like the Sharks have that right now. Even Will Smith, I don't think he's going to be a superstar player. I think he's going to be an all-star, but not superstar. Uh, Celebrini, however, possibly could be. Now, I was looking at um, the guy from the Athletics, Wheeler. I think it's Scott Wheeler. Okay. That yeah. does the rankings. 
Someone asked a great question. They said, how would you rank last year's draft class and this year's draft class oh, if yeah. they were mixed? Yeah. Like, where would they where would they stand? Celebrini, he had right behind Bedard. Yeah. Um, so he's ahead of the other three guys, um, or the the big four from... Fantilli last. and uh, Leo Carlson. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the caliber of where they would stand. Obviously not as good as Bedard. Right, um, but right below that. So that to me would be more of like Jack Eichel type yeah. player. Yeah, like which I'm fine with. All star, fine with the Jack Eichel. <laughs> Borderline superstar. Yeah, maybe if he wasn't, uh, uh, if he stayed healthy, he probably would have been more of a superstar than. Yeah, I guess he kind of became kind of a player like that. Yeah, and, and, and I'm with you with the the hope that there is a blue chip. Uh, very high-end defensive prospect on the horizon here because, by all accounts, um, you know, Mook Madulin, again, I'm with you. He's probably going to be, you know, a top four at best. Um, and Henry Thren, we've seen him kind of already, what he can bring. He's going to get better. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've kind of seen what he's all about. Again, for me, not a top two, right? Not a top pairing type of guy. Um, Jack Thompson seems very promising, but again, right now he's playing in the AHL alongside Mook Madulin. We don't really know how he's going to shake out, but again, he was... Pretty highly touted uh, prospect, so happy with him. And again, with Luca Cagnoni, is that he's dynamic offensively, but he's tiny. He's like yeah. five, what eight, five yeah. seven, five eight, so. something like that. So he's a very small guy, and he's may- maybe growing. I don't know. I mean, he seems <laughs> like he's. It, it, look, if if what's his name, uh, Colin Graf can go from you know five seven to six one or whatever that was, you know, maybe he's, he's twenty one. So however old Luca is, he's I'm 19. sure. And he's 5'9", 183. Okay, so, I mean, at, at 5'9", it's, they're probably being generous there. He's probably a little bit smaller That's on than skates. That. Yeah, on skates. <laughs> it's always on skates. It's always on skates. So, if, if he's on the shorter end, but he's only 19, he's probably still going to be getting a little bit of size to him. So, again, could be a little bit of a project there. But, but he's not, he wasn't a first-round draft. He was no. a fourth-round draft. Right? Absolutely. And probably because of his size. His skill was probably in the late first round, but skill, or uh, size-wise, he's he was... Yeah, seen kind of now as like a steal in the fourth round. Yeah, um, he probably should have gone based on his size a little earlier, but Sharks got a good one there, so I'm fine with it. But you if know. if Luca was Shakir's size, right? I think that then you've got that prospect that everybody wants, right? Oh my god, if he he would be playing in the NHL right Absolutely. now. Absolutely, that was the case. Absolutely. <laughs> So hopefully, again, him growing a little bit um, and, and getting his opportunity in the show, because uh, it sounds like, by all accounts, again, um, he's, he's just a very good uh, playmaking type uh, defender, very offensively minded, can run a power play, um, all those things that you want from a high-end offensive talent on the blue line. We should ask our uh, good friend Dan Boyle what he thinks about There you him. go. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. Um, so I'm with you though. I, I think it'd be nice to have a, a blue chip defensive prospect. But when you take a look at the goaltending, there are no goaltending prospects. Now it's not a huge deal. I don't think so. Because yeah. you've got Blackwood, right? Who's not super old, no. right? He's, and you've he's what 26? twenty six. Uh, I think he's twenty eight. Twenty eight. Okay. Um, you, you've got him, and then you've also got Vitek Vanacek, who hasn't played a game for us yet. Um, Both 20, uh, Blackwood's 27 and Vanacek's 28. 27, 28. Okay, so still, I mean, we talked about goaltenders being, taking a little bit right. longer to get there anyway, right? Yep. So I think uh, with these two right now, good, they solidify the net. We don't need them right now. We need them in like two, three years. So hopefully, again, either that turns into a trade that brings somebody in, or it turns into an extension that has them there uh, in their prime while our younger guys are starting to get towards their prime, right? So I don't think it's a huge issue to not have a uh, blue chip goaltending prospect in the pipeline right now, uh, but definitely something that in terms of if you're looking at this as the rebuild's not going right, that's maybe one area where you can say they they could be a lot stronger in terms of prospects. Uh, And there's different ways of thinking about um, goaltending whether to get a blue chip or not putting kind of your eggs in one basket for a blue chip prospect for goalies goalies could yeah. make or break it right like you could spend a second round draft pick or even a first round draft pick on a goalie and then they don't pan out that's mm-hmm. awful whereas a first round draft pick on any other position most likely they're going to make it to the nhl at some point um that's part of it putting your eggs in one basket but then um Oh, I forgot where I was going with this, but 
<laughs> just just goalies in general. You could you could find them on the free agents of the list. But oh, I know what I was gonna say. It's better to invest in a top end defenseman that's gonna get heavy minutes, like close to thirty minutes okay. a night, yeah. and playing eighty two games versus a goalie that at best sixty games. Yeah. Right. The the top goalies that play the most are only playing sixty to sixty five, um, so you're you're taking your best player on quote unquote out for twenty thirty games a season, yeah. um, and then you get to playoffs they can get fatigued if you don't. So I think uh, teams that's another reason why teams are leaning less on spending so much money on goaltending and and also spending such high capital on goaltending. Bobrovsky, <laughs> Bobrovsky, the ten million dollar man. <laughs> No, I hey, look if, if Chicago can win a cup with Antiniemi and Net, right? Those are defensemen. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's that's the. I'd rather go that route too. I think if you have the equivalent of Mackenzie Blackwood uh, in Net, I think you're going to be okay as long as you've got solid five guys in front of them mm-hmm. uh, on every shift. That's that's my take on that one. So again, not too concerned that there's not a goalie prospect on the horizon here, but. Um, it's it's definitely one area. If you're going to make the argument that it's not going well in San Jose, you can say, okay, they don't have a goaltending prospect. Fine, you got me there. But other than that, Mike Greer has brought in, as we already showed, five at least mm-hmm. prospects that are pretty solid prospects um, on top of the ones that were already on that list that were, were given to him, gifted to him, if you will. Um, I, I think we have... Quite a bit in the pipeline here, and I I'm would very in, happy with that. I would include Zetterland sure. in that, and obviously Eklund. I don't think you have Eklund on this list because Eklund, quite... Eklund's an NHLer, buddy. He's yeah. not a prospect anymore. Yeah, even Zetterland too. But Zetterland I, yeah. came via trade. Yeah, and at first I was kind of like, "Who is this young guy?" I guess he's a prospect. Who knows? Who is Maybe this tomato? Out, right? Yeah. Who is this human tomato? Yeah. He's, he's so red all the time. And speaking of, how many goals does he have right oh, now? Oh God, I don't know. Twenty. Four. 21. Ugh. He's at 21. He'll end up with... Wait, what did we say? 25. We said 25. Uh, we were saying 20 a while ago. 20 goals and f- how many points? Uh, 40 points. That's what we said? We, we we asked if he would get to 40. Did he get to 40? He's at 40. 21 goals and 19 assists. It's good when you get something right, you know? Guess who else is at 40? Oh, God, I don't know. Willie... Eklund. Oh, there you go. Yeah. He's at uh, 15 <laughs> goals, 25 assists. Okay. And Grandlin is... That tracks, man, because I've seen him with that puck, dude. Like, he's got a shot and everything. Don't get me wrong. And he got the hattie. That's great. But the man is a wizard just we were, making passes. We were asking if Grandlin was going to get to 60. Yes. He is at 54 right now. Uh, 12 goals, 42 assists. I said no. He would get to 59, right? We're going to have to go back and look, but I think so. I said, I yeah. said no, because I remember you said you're going to be the bad guy. Yeah. Right, fine. I said 66 more points in five games. He's tracking. He could, he could do it, but... Oh, yeah, and then Zadina, right? Zadina is... Where, he's fourth in scoring. He's right behind those guys at 13 goals, 10 oh, assists. Oh, man, everybody's calling us out because I didn't have Zadina <laughs> on that list. But see, yeah, you know, and it's funny because I guess for me, I guess I felt like... I didn't put Zettelin on there. I didn't put Eklund on there. I didn't put Zadina on there. For me, those guys are NHLers. Yeah. Um, although, again, you forget. These guys are young. That's Go ahead. Good. Read that. Uh, Andy Mann. Greer is done with this organization. Is needed to be done for five years. He's ripping the Band-Aid off and getting after it. Not everything is going to work out, but so far he's doing fine in my opinion. And you know what? It, not everything has to work out. He's got so many prospects here on the horizon. If half of them work out, it's a good team. Yeah. Right? So, I don't know. Again, don't understand it, uh, how, how anyone can look at this and say it's not going well. Because it's not the scorched earth method that Chicago did. Sure, but even then, how's Chicago doing? Let's talk about that in just a minute here, because we're going to ask the question, 68 points was what we were talking about. Ugh. You said 68 points will be enough for be, to, to be worse than the NHL. This is at the beginning of the season. How are we doing on that that number there, Aaron? How are we doing? Uh... Not good. Not good. (laughs) Okay, so there are four teams that are still under 68 points. The majority of them have either five or four games remaining, so not a whole lot uh, going on there in terms of uh, ability to close that gap. Columbus needs two more wins than they're there. Columbus uh, is the closest at 64 points, and they have four games remaining, so they need to hit on two of those games to get to 68 points, which would be the basement 
of what we thought or you thought at the beginning of the season. Yep. Not at all the case. Okay, so there's that. Uh, they also have a nine-point lead on Anaheim. So when we're talking about that, <laughs> the, Anaheim and Chicago and the Sharks are way farther down the line than 68 points. So uh, the Sharks are uh, very unlikely to hit even 50 points. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see exactly why in just a second. We, the other thing we were talking about was the Sharks hitting how many wins? 20. Do you think we still have a chance of hitting 20 wins? Absolutely. Because the Sharks currently have 18 with five games less. you got to hit two out of five. Looking at the percentage in terms of points percentage, it does not look good. Maybe we get one more out of the five uh, based on the trend. But even if we get the two, that's still only 20 wins. It's not certainly not over 20 wins. No. Yeah. So uh, I, I, to get to 21, you're talking about three. Now you're talking more of the games that you're going to win. I just no. don't think we get no. there. No. Maybe with some overtime losses. Maybe. But if they could push overtime. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> if they could push overtime. Right. Um, or shootout losses, yeah. So the, yeah, so 20 wins I don't think is going to happen. You think it might happen. Uh, but the standings right now, San Jose has 44 points. Horrid. Uh, yeah. Chicago has 51 points. Again, a seven-point differential for the uh, math inclined. Uh, both teams have five games left. Okay, So the, the, the thing here is that we would have to go on a catastrophic win streak. <laughs> Good timing. Uh, a, a catastrophic win streak to overtake Chicago for 31st place in the league. I think it's safe to say at this point, the Sharks have locked up the highest odds of getting the first overall draft pick. I'm not going to say it because they're not mathematically there, but alluding to our texts earlier, the tragic number for the Sharks <laughs> is three more losses will guarantee them Yes, the uh, three more regulation losses yes. will guarantee it for them. So three losses out of those five games, which is very doable. I mean, no, I don't. it's not plausible... But it could happen because, again, it's the NHL and we just swept the St. Louis Blues <laughs> in the series. For This is just weird. So, yeah, weird things happen. And the Sharks are going to be playing. Let's see who they're playing this week. Calgary, Seattle, Minnesota, and Edmonton. Now, the Edmonton game, that's, only, that's the second to last game of the season. Edmonton, at this point, could bench all of their starters. They could, you know, yeah. day to day. Right. Why play against the Sharks? What's it matter? Like, who cares? Um, so if they bench like McDavid and Dryside on those games, there's a chance the Sharks could win. Who knows? I'm not saying that they would or that they should, but I'm not saying that it won't happen either. Okay. It's possible. So for the upcoming games, we may as well just say what the upcoming games are. Sure. Then. Okay. So for stay. the upcoming <laughs> games, we got four of them, and I want to remind you guys uh, once again that we are going to go live on Tuesday. Monday. Monday. So. Yeah. The Edmonton game's early. So it's ending early. Okay. It's in Edmonton. So it starts at 6.30 instead of 7.30. Okay. So, but we're doing a Monday show? We're doing a Monday show next week. So, okay. what will be going on after that game's over? So, then it's only three upcoming games that we're talking about. We're not talking about the Edmonton Four. game. No, we are, because we're going on after the Edmonton game. It says Tuesday, Sharks at Edmonton. Sorry, I'm in Monday. So, here we go. This is what I have to deal with. I hope you guys understand this, okay? Uh, <laughs> now i got to make sure. Is that right? I don't know. You better check. I'll go through the first couple games and we'll maybe get to the Edmonton game. I'm sure Nick is already like, it's on a Monday. What are you talking about? Uh, so, guys, uh, Tuesday, I'm guessing, this Tuesday, uh, <laughs> tomorrow, Sharks, AA, Ron, we are two losses from clinching. It is Monday. He says two losses from clinching. Okay. I mean, we're not two losses from clinching. We're three losses. No, two, because we're seven points behind. Two losses away. Seven points. Oh, we're yeah. seven points behind. We can win three games. Yeah. However, Nick, I appreciate your... Uh, two. Two losses. Two is a tragic If they're number. overtime losses, then that's an issue. So, we again, it's not two quite... Two regulation losses. Absolutely. We need two regulation losses. Okay. We'll fix it in the edit. So, <laughs> we won't. <laughs> anyway. Uh, okay. Edit? Speaking of fixing it, uh, yes, it is a Monday game. So, there you go. So, Tuesday, Sharks versus Calgary. Thursday, Sharks in Seattle. 7 p.m. game. Sharks on Saturday against Minnesota at home. And then again in Edmonton on Monday. We will be going live Monday after the game. Correct? Yeah. Okay. So that leaves only one game left for the next show. 
for the upcoming game. So it should be a short show. It should be. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> the, no, 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 no. The next show, we're going to be talking about these four games. It's the show after that. We'll have just the one game to talk about. So just so you guys are aware. But again, if you're subscribed, you don't have to worry about any of that. Hit the notification bell. We'll let you know when you, we're, we're going on live here. Okay, so. Brad Carr. I always love Aaron's enthusiasm, but I don't think we get to 20 wins this season. <laughs> Whoa! Aaron's enthusiasm? What am I doing on this side of the table? It's only two more. <laughs> two more wins. They could do it. They could do it. They might hit 20 wins. They they ain't getting... Are they getting 50 points? Do you think they're getting 50 points? Are they at 40, 44? 44. No. They're not getting 50 points. No. And even if they do get 50 points and they break the 20 wins that, that we're talking about, they still can't get past Chicago with just the three wins. They need more help. Right? And Chicago's 5-5. Five, five. Five and five in their last ten, so they're actually putting together some wins. Huge fan of the work. Thank you guys for the show. Oh, thank you for the show. Got to head to bed. Mary Tankathon. Yes, Kellen. Thank you so much uh, for for being here. Do appreciate you, buddy. Um, and and good night. I guess so. There you go. Um, so Aaron, this is again the Monday show on on Edmonton. We'll be after the game, uh, so we'll be here uh, probably talking just about exactly what we just saw. Hopefully. Uh, 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 good news in terms of clinching that first overall, uh, not first overall, the highest odds for the first overall draft pick um, in that show. So that would be nice. Aaron, I don't think we hit 50 wins. I don't. <laughs> 50, 20 wins? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 50 points. Yeah. I don't think we hit 20 wins. I don't think Grandland gets to 60 points. Jeez, man. I'm just trying to be realistic. You here. take your hat off, man. I'm just trying to be realistic. I'm saying what I think is going to happen. Okay. Brutal. <laughs> Go on. Just pile it on. Go. Uh, that was it. <laughs> that was it. Um, wait, oh, oh, who's the other one? Uh, uh, 45 points. Well, they all kind of go hand in hand, right? Yeah, a little bit. If they're going to put together two more wins, yeah. they're going to have to score more goals, Absolutely. which means Granlin's going to get more points. See? You're following right along, aren't you guys? <laughs> So I'm I don't say they yeah they do it. I, I don't think they put all that together. They get to 20 wins. Grandlin gets to 60 points. Uh, I guess Zedlin gets to 45 because he's at 40. You think he will? I think him and Eklund will get close to 45, and Grandlin will get to 60. I don't think either of them get. To, well, maybe that Eklund. power play is on fire. It right is. Now. It is. It is. I don't think Zedlin gets to 45 points. I think he's right under the radar there. Um, the other thing I was going to bring up, and it just just hit me. We were talking about goal differential. Oh, yeah. And we, we asked about, do you think... Where's the camera? There it is. We, do you think they're going to get to a minus 150? Now, they have five, five games left. Mm -hmm. Five games left. Sharks are a minus 136. Mm -hmm. Do you think in those five games, the goal differential hits hard enough that we get that extra minus 14 to make it an even 150? No, because they're going to get some wins. Ooh. So. Again, all hand in hand. Yep. Okay. Fair enough. No, I, I'm honestly, I'm with you. I don't think we get to minus 150. I think we we get a little shy of that. Yeah. yeah. And it's not even because of the wins. I just don't. I think the games are getting a little bit tighter. Just I a feel little like, bit tighter. You see what the refs have been doing? What? Oh my god, they're calling everything. No, it's ridiculous. It's like it's a preseason game. It's crazy. And Addison got kicked out two games in a row. Malachi Nunes, as long as we get Celebrini, I don't care. <laughs> any of these stats that we're talking about, he's like, whatever. It doesn't matter. Hey, man, it just makes the season a little bit more fun to, to watch. Paul, stop him. Stop who? <laughs> you. Me? Me. Stop him? Know. Stop me, I, I guess. Mean, nah, Aaron's maybe, jinxing I us. Oh, Aaron's. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Aaron, anything else? Oh, yeah, I see you want to talk about fantasy hockey. Yeah, this is Fire the trophy well. for fantasy go. hockey, which... Is right here, and we are in the finals this week. So nice. uh, by the next show next week, we will have a winner. And I just had it up. It is between Will Nye, the science guy, <laughs> who was in sixth in the last playoff spot, versus uh, Nui Shark Sauce, who was in second place. And uh, yeah, the finals will be done at the end of Sunday night, so we'll know by Monday and then, and then who's going to win. Yeah, be able to uh, announce the winner. And then That's I cool. will. I don't know if you can see it, but the name God. is hand stamped into the trophy. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. It's a you, heck of a you, job. You take yeah. your hammer you. and your little... It's a hand stamp. Yeah. So each letter, <laughs> I hammer each letter in and the numbers. So last year was Graham Montgomery, who was on the show. Uh, 22 slash 23, Graham Montgomery. Yeah. It's, it's on there forever. Is that white out? Did no. you make a mistake? <laughs> it's not white out. It's not white out. <laughs> nice. It is not easy to do. 
<laughs> and uh, in my other league, the one I've been doing for 18 years now, we have a almost one-to-one replica of the Stanley Cup. Wow. And I did the same thing. We had a trophy that was about this size before, and we'd filled it up. So I had to get a new one. So I was like, well, let's just get the real one. Sure. So we got a, like a, practically the real one. And I it spent three nights backdating every, all the winners <laughs> around the trophy. It took forever. Jeez. It was a lot. A so, lot of work. It sounded like it took three nights. Uh, it, yeah. it, three full nights. It was, it was long. Oh, um, Sharks Oregon says, asking again. Sorry, we must have missed it. Uh, any chance Pavs comes back mm, to lead the kids next year if he wins a cup this year and we overpay him? If he wins a cup... I wouldn't be shocked if he retired. I yeah, if he wins a cup, I think he's either done <coughs> or maybe he just kind of gives uh, one last little tour with uh, the Dallas Stars, and then uh, that that'd probably be it. I don't think I don't know how much we want to reveal here because I I know that there was something about him not coming back to San Jose ever. <laughs> like, well, he sold his house. Yeah, okay, he sold That's his house. But there it. was there was also a... Uh, a re- we're not going to go into it. It's okay. Um, but I, 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 doubt, show. I doubt that uh, Joe Pavelski would come back to San Jose. He's from... Uh, I know he went to school in Wisconsin. Was he from Wisconsin? I can't remember where he's from. Plover? I want to say it's Plover. Nick um, Nick is gonna just warrior type this out right now. I'm telling you, you guys, Plover, Wisconsin. Uh, I want to say Plover. I could be wrong. Let's see. If I just keep saying Plover, though, maybe it's, it's Plover. Hey, there we He's go. Born All Plover, right. Wisconsin. So he is from Wisconsin. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, I think I believe his wife is from there too, and I think they wanted to kind of make their way back, back yeah. there. Yeah. So I, if they went, especially if they win a cup, I have a feeling he retires. He's just, I'm done. Yeah. I mean, he's 39. He's turning 40 in July. See, see, now that's old. That's old. Wow. Yeah, 30, not so much. Tomas Hurdle, just a little bit. You know, he's 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 a young buck, 30 years old. You know, mm-hmm. but 40. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm 42. I I tried to stand up earlier today, and my back was killing me. Oh man. All I did was sit there. That's all I did. Don't get old, all you kids. Now, Paul is correct. Yeah, my back hurts. I shoveled of dirt I'm yesterday, and I'm dying today. I'm dying. My back is. <laughs> this has turned into the "I'm too old" uh, show. The, uh, I'm the, my back is killing me. Factor. I forgot my cane. Chiropractor factor. <laughs> Trade in the, the Vegas. Chiropractor factor. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. It's pretty good. Not bad. Uh, okay, I think we're done talking about all that stuff, guys. Uh, I, I appreciate you being in the chat. And if anybody did happen to reach out to someone, and that someone is in the chat right now, welcome. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, we do this all the time, but if you hit the subscribe button, you won't have to worry about when we're doing it because it'll just tell you so long as you hit the notification bell. Aaron, why are you laughing at me? Because you're just funny. Dude. I'm doing the best I can here. Someone's got to promote the show, and you don't know what the heck you're uh-huh. doing. However, you can support me personally by hitting the like button because anytime you see uh, a thumbs up and the like, I know that you're talking about me and not this guy. So please smash that like button. Let him have it. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Enjoy the stream. Give us a like. Thank you, Super Jason. Oh, the see, likes are going down. He's now. on. Dang it, you guys. You're screwing it up. <laughs> screwing it up. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, again, uh, if you want to help uh, support the show, as, who was it? Was it Kellen that, that uh, gave us the super chat there? No. Ryan Sontag. Ryan Sontag, thank you. Yeah. Oh, Kellen was the one that went to bed, that's why. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Sontag, I, I, sorry. Ryan Sontag, thank you so much for the $5 super chat earlier in the show. Do appreciate that so much. It does help the show a lot. And if you want to be as supportive and awesome as Ryan Sontag, please, you can do the same thing. Go to the uh, super chat button somewhere down below there. Or you can use uh, Venmo and tip us on Venmo at the Fin Factor. Anything that you put in there comment-wise, we'll go ahead and read on the show. If we do not do it during this show, we can do it during the next show. This is my symbol for next show. I do this thing. So there you go. Uh, you can also uh, support us and get something in return by going to thefinfactor.com, checking out the store, getting any of the merch that we have there available, hats, shirts, sweatshirts, t-shirts. We sell tombstones now, which is amazing. Um, and if you don't believe me, check the store and see what's actually there. So, <laughs> hey, man, you could die letting everybody know that you were an avid Sharks fan, what okay? I'm just saying. Just saying. There's going to be a Fin Factor cruise at a discount you watch. Um, Aaron, Spotify, spit it. Go ahead. Spotify. Find us on Spotify. Just search the Fin Factor under podcast and you will find us. That way you don't have to look at Paul because he talks <laughs> like he's Italian with his hands. Like I am place. Italian. Yeah, I know. It's what I do. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, I guess that's it. Aaron, any last comments? I, I, there's one comment there from Nick HBK right near the bottom there. Super Jason. It says Paul is incorrect. No, it's... <laughs> 
Bowl. It's correct. And he won't put it on the screen. I see how it is. The Shoal <laughs> Brothers. Oh, there it is. There it is. Already Thanks, did. Nick. You Thanks, Nick. It. Appreciate you, buddy. Earlier. Paul's blind. He didn't see it the first time. <laughs> I, that, I saw it the first time. I want to say fact. it twice. His hands are in the way. Uh, okay. We good? You good? Good. I'm good. Guys, appreciate the show. Hopefully, you enjoyed it as much as I did. This is... Uh, I, I love doing this every week. So... For Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we will see you guys next week. Next week. Bye bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com, where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help.